Hey guys, welcome back. Today we got a great tutorial for you. I'm going to show you how to turn a refrigerator compressor into an airbrush compressor. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're going to get right down to it. So, what you have here is you've got your refrigerator compressor, right? It's going to have two copper lines on the back. Okay, one of them is an inlet. Okay, this is your suction in. I've got a filter dryer attached to that from a home AC unit. Keeps the moisture out, keeps the particles out. Okay, you have this other line. That's your line that pushes the air out into the tank, into the top of that. Okay, this is your inlet into the tank. There's a little check valve in there. There's a little ball, right? The air can only go one way. It can't come back out this way, okay? got this switch right here it turns it off at a certain pressure turns it back on at a certain pressure little markings on there say what that is so what we've got first off is called a three-in-one starter kit it's got three wires on one side and two wires on the other these three wires go directly to the compressor and they connect onto those pins that are inside there and they're marked on the unit. Okay, so just the way you see it there, the orientation of those pins is the way that it is when it's sitting upright. So you just follow that, right? Follow the wiring diagram on here and you can't go wrong. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this simple if I can. I've got my cord coming in, right? My power cable, all right? coming up here it's the, my particular cord is brown all right so I've got my three wires got my hot got my neutral and I've got my ground ground goes to the body of the compressor because I've got my power wires on the top of this thing right they're not polarized there's not one positive one negative one hot one neutral nothing like that okay it's just power goes in whichever one you want to pick I've taken my hot wire right my hot wire my energized wire off of my pigtail coming in my cord and I've run it up to this other pigtail that leads up to this switch, All right? So then the other side of that runs down, and it's white. It doesn't matter. The colors don't matter on this particular deal. They just happen to look like that. I've got this going through here to the other side. What I've done is I've put this switch in line on the hot wire coming in, there's probably a whole other tutorial we could do on just the wiring of this thing. But just remember, your pressure switch up top is going to go in line on your hot wire. If you can follow your wiring like you're supposed to, then you'll be fine. That's really the most complicated part of this is the wiring. Okay, so let me get on to the next spot. If you guys have any questions about any of that, just let me know. Okay, so what I've done here is I've attached this filter dryer. It keeps the water out and keeps the dirty particles out of this compressor. It's nice and clean in there, right? So this is your suction. And in the event that you get one of these powered up and you don't know which side is which, you can put your finger over it. You can actually feel it. I'll turn it on here in a moment and hear it run. Um, anyway, so you've got, your, you've got your other copper coming up here and that's the one that goes into the top of the tank, right? There's the check valve in there. Air only gets in one way. Then you've got your regulator here, right? shows you your pressure in the tank and it shows you your working pressure. So then I've got another filter right here, right? That's pretty standard, pretty common right there. And then there's a, there's a shutoff valve. This part here, I got a Harbor Freight. Little fittings and things like that here. I got those at Harbor Freight. So I've got the hose coming off of here and then I've got my airbrush attached to the other end of it uh, underneath the desk. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna power this thing up and you can hear it run and hear how quiet it is. There it goes. Okay. So I've got some hissing going on here. That's this, that's a little drain right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's spring loaded, so it'll it'll stop. I'm gonna pull down on it just so it'll get a little extra push. So you can hear the compressor run. It's really quiet. Okay, so there we go. Now we're gonna pressure up. Now a refrigerator compressor will pressure up to above 500 PSI. 
This thing shuts off at 100 PSI and turns back on at 80. So you're not going to be anywhere near 500 PSI. So this thing is more than able to handle the pressure you would need to airbrush. What I've done is I've just kept my wires short and I take all these wires and I tuck them up inside there and then there's a cover that goes over it and there's a little clip that uh, fits over and clips it on to hold it in place. So there's no bare wire showing, nothing's, everything's safe. This is out and exposed, but I keep it off to the side and it's got a case around it. So it's not, there's no bare wires or anything showing, nothing metal to touch on. All your wire nuts are inside here. You could wrap them up with electrical tape if you wanted to. Okay, in the event that you have a leak, like I've got little hissing leaks all over this thing. I need to tighten everything up. In the event that you do have that happening, these things are designed to not short cycle, which means turn off and on in a short period of time because they can overheat and burn up. So they've got a safety built into them where if it's been a certain amount of time, they won't turn on. It needs to wait that amount of time before it can turn on. So I found a YouTube video explaining all of this, how this can work. And then the electrical part of it, I had to figure that out myself. I've done maintenance for a long time. So I have a pretty good understanding of how to wire these things up. You still want to be careful. You still got to kind of think about it, you know, unless you're an electrician doing this kind of stuff all day long. Okay, so there we go. We turned off. So let's see, we are at 100 and working pressure, static pressure is about 30 right now. So I'm going to show you how this thing works, actually. And I'm not going to, okay, so that's on. Let's go ahead. Let's not spray any of the electrical stuff. How about that? That's more than adequate. No, you can't see it. It's just water. There is water in there, by the way. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, see? Okay, don't spray the electrical stuff too much. Yeah, see? That's how that works. Now, once your pressure drops down to 80, and that only dropped down about a pound, just doing that. But once it drops down to 80, it'll turn back on again. Um, if you're using it pretty heavily, and it turns off and on, you could run into a problem. Uh, I could spray. I'm way over here, so you can't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spray any of that stuff, but I can spray, I can spray quite a bit. See right there, I've only used about five pounds. I've got 20 pounds to work with, so it's, it's and that was, that's, pretty heavy spray volume too. So I guess the main thing to remember here is you've got your power cord coming in, right? You're gonna break your hot off the power cord and you're gonna run it up to this switch right here. And then it's gonna come out of the switch and come back over here and complete the circuit into this. The other side of this goes to where the neutral is on the power cord coming in. So the other cord that you've got over here really is think of it as just one wire. You're going in and you're coming right back out to complete that circuit. You've just got something in, it's a switch, just like a light switch at the, at the house, just like a light switch at home, right? You, the light switch is breaking the circuit. That's all it's doing. I, I guess if you guys have any questions or you wanna see any more details about any of this stuff, like any of the electrical or anything like that, you need a little more, a little more advice, maybe that'll help kind of clear some of that up if it didn't make any sense. Um, all of this stuff here, <laughs> These are, these are all, I mean, this is the copper that, that came. I made sure to leave enough, uh, when I pulled this out of that refrigerator, I made sure to leave enough copper on there to where I had, you know, I had something to work with because I didn't know how far I was going to have to go. I just attached it with some plumbing parts and, and a clamp, and there's another little clamp down here, and then a rubber hose, and there's over here there's a rubber hose attached to the dryer filter and some duct tape wrapped around it so that it just it'll stand up so it doesn't hang over and crimp it. There's really not a whole lot to this. Really all it is is you've got to you've got to give it power. Um, you have to have one of these. You have to have the three in one start. This will replace the starter relay and the capacitor that go inside there when you have the refrigerator. Take those off, it exposes the pins. You attach this to the pins. That's the main the main ingredient right here is this starter, starter relay. Okay. If you guys have any questions or anything about this, 
feel free to ask. Uh, if I need to do an updated video, maybe on some of the electrical, uh, I can do that as well. If not, uh, ask me Ask me in the comments. If you guys have any questions, ask me in the comments. I'm always on there. I try to answer as quickly as possible. Um, I'll help you out. That's what I'm here for. All right, so I'm going to call this good. There's really not a whole lot to this. It's just a big Frankenstein setup. Uh, this compressor is going to last a really, really long time. In the event that you run across a refrigerator that's not working anymore, it might be worth yanking the compressor out of it. Just cut the cut the lines. There's you're going to have some refrigerant loss if there's refrigerant in it. Um, there's no way to avoid that. Um, oh, by the way, this other this other copper line right here, this is a service port right here. Is what this is. It's just a little stub out that the manufacturer left. It's crimped off, and it's, there's nothing going on there. In the event that a uh, service technician wanted to put a port on there to recharge it, if it had a leak or anything like that, and they had to fix anything, they could put a port on there to recharge that. So that you just ignore that. Well, hopefully that made some sense to you guys. Um, I actually really enjoyed making this thing, and I've really enjoyed using it. It's been great. It's super quiet. You can't beat that. I'm in the house. It doesn't bother anybody. The spraying is louder than the compressor is. <laughs> it's super quiet. It's super convenient. It really is. It didn't cost me anything for this. right? I got the compressor for free. The tank, I think I spent 40 or $45 at Harbor Freight. Uh, it had a brand new pump on it. It burned up after maybe an hour and a half of use. So I, I got a tank, paid for the tank. Um, this part here can be anywhere from 10 to $25, depending on where you get it. And that's it. I mean, you get all these little fittings from Harbor Freight. You can put anything like this together yourself to use at home. It's going to last a really long time. And it feels kind of nice to be able to create something like that. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or anything about any of this, ask me in the comments. We'll talk about it. I'll help you guys out. That's what I'm here for. I'm trying to make this channel be a place where we can share information. I can learn things, too. Uh, I really like to learn myself. I'm going to be doing a lot of experimenting on this channel, too. So, you guys are going to see me mess up. You guys are going to see me learn new things I hadn't done before. Uh, we're all going to do this together. So, I really appreciate you coming. And... Thanks for watching this video and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to talk about with this. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.